Yes, following a report by the Free Beacon, Georgia has launched an investigation into a charity controlled by the church that pays Senator Raphael Warnock a $7,417 monthly housing allowance and owns an apartment building that is trying to evict tenants. Warnock's campaign is calling this a desperate attack on the spiritual home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Joining us now to discuss is the vice president of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer uh, tight race down there in Georgia. Observers concerned that personal attacks against Herschel Walker are having an impact on him and his campaign. Do you think that the revelations about Warnock this late in the uh, in the campaign actually will stick and actually could have an impact on the race? Sure, I think they can have an impact on the race, but I think uh, not, none of the personal problems of either of these very flawed candidates are going to uh, make it easier to buy food at the grocery store. It is not going to make gas cheaper. I think Americans are hurting that the real issues are kitchen table economic issues, and in places like Georgia and even Michigan, there's a real distraction here. Uh, the candidates aren't talking about that. The media is not as focused on that, but that is what voters are going to show up at the polls and be thinking about. And the question is going to be, who is to blame? And if you look at President Biden's approval ratings, I think the Democrats are in real trouble here. Uh, yeah, and Jennifer, this, um, this I, I should say, uh, race between these two men in Georgia has been pretty ugly. And are you anticipating it's going to get even uglier tonight during their sole televised debate? Yeah, I have not found that American politics gets prettier as it goes on. But what I will say is I think the person that is going to be successful here in this debate is the one that does refocus on the kitchen table economic issues. What shocks me is that, that, that both men are not coming out and trying to define a way that they are going to impact the average voter's life. And I think that person that does that tonight in the debate wins. But these ugly attacks, they're back and forth. The mud is slung. After a while, you're just two guys standing there covered in mud. There's not much to distinguish you. Who is going to make people's lives better? Because people are hurting in the United States right now, certainly in Georgia. Um, and I think the one who's able to come out of the debate tonight having to articulate what they will do and why they can do it better than the other guy um, will win. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. With inflation at its highest level in 40 years and interest rates skyrocketing, your retirement plans are in danger. Well, our friends at American Hartford Gold can help show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Yeah. If you call them right now, they have a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order. So don't wait. Call now. Here's the number. 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text. Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532. Uh, yeah, and Jennifer, this, um, this I, I should say, uh, race between these two men in Georgia has been pretty ugly. And are you anticipating it's going to get even uglier tonight during their sole televised debate? Yeah, I have not found that American politics gets prettier as it goes on. But what I will say is I think the person that is going to be successful here in this debate is the one that does refocus on the kitchen table economic issues. What shocks me is that, that, that both men are not coming out and trying to define a way that they are going to impact the average voter's life. And I think that person that does that tonight in the debate wins. But these ugly attacks, they're back and forth. The mud is slung. After a while, you're just two guys standing there covered in mud. There's not much to distinguish you. Who is going to make people's lives better? Because people are hurting in the United States right now, certainly in Georgia. Um, and I think the one who's able to come out of the debate tonight having to articulate what they will do and why they can do it better than the other guy um, will win. Meanwhile, there are two critical debates in Wisconsin and in Michigan last night ahead of the midterm elections in November. During last night's gubernatorial debate in Michigan, Tudor Dixon called out Gretchen Whitmer for her support of the defund the police movement and offered her strategy to reduce crime. Take a listen. And we need to make sure that cops, we hire more cops and they know we have their back and we're going to get out of their way and let them do their job. Jennifer, nobody thought that Tudor Dixon would have a shot here. I mean, but the latest uh, American Greatness Insider Advantage poll has this, a likely voter poll, has this as a tie. Um, are they Democrats getting nervous in a state like Michigan? 
Yes, and they should be. And look, they're pouring money into Oregon. They're pouring. They're going to have to pour money into Michigan because remember, Governor Whitmer not only supported defunding the police, or as she said, in spirit, which is defunding the police, right? This is a woman who's guarded by the state police, but wants to defund the police for everyone else who needs protection. She also oversaw um, crushing draconian shutdown shutdown in Michigan, one that saw 35,000 people lose their lives despite her shutdown. So she didn't actually protect lives, while at the same time keeping children out of school, pushing the mask ma mandate well beyond what the citizens of Michigan wanted. And I think they remember this. I think they see what Joe Biden is doing to the economy. And I think the Democrats overall as seen as setting back and hurting America. And she, Governor Whitman, is not overcoming this. Yeah. She's not able to overcome this right now. Yeah, sorry about that, Jennifer. I did want to ask you about Wisconsin. Uh, Republican Senator Ron Johnson and Democrat Mandela Barnes held their final debate before the midterm elections. Now, Johnson criticized the state's current leadership for wanting to cut the inmate population in half. Here's what he said. The thing you have to do is you have to keep violent criminals in jail, and you have to support law enforcement. Now, unfortunately, you know, we have an administration in Wisconsin right now that their goal was to reduce the prison population by 50 percent. Yeah, Jennifer Johnson did look to be in a little bit of trouble a couple months ago. Where do you think the race stands today? Right. This is still the toughest race for Republicans. It's the one most at risk. But he's smart to go and, and, and pivot to crime. Look, in national polling, crime is now a top five issue. About six months ago, it wasn't necessarily so, sitting in the top five for voters. It's coming in right after the economy and education. So I think Republicans talking about how, not that they're going to go back to being the, the, the tough on crime, dirty Harry days, but that they were the leaders of real substantive criminal justice reform and that the Democrats did undermine that by putting radical DAs in across the country, by trying to just not taking seriously violent crime, violent criminals, prosecuting crime. And I think this is a wise pivot for Johnson in an otherwise tough race. Yeah. All right, Jennifer Stefano, thanks for your insight on the rapidly approaching midterm elections. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.